Welcome back. Well, the markets are looking at pressure all over again. In fact, uh, we are again down over 200 points on the Nifty. And the Bank Nifty is seeing uh, a renewed bout of uh, selling pressure. Let's just pull up the Bank Nifty once again. So there's been an attempt at a pullback, but it's getting sold into, and that's showing up on a lot, lot of different stocks. Pull up Axis Bank, for instance. Uh, of course, HDFC Bank has been quite weak from the start. Indusind Bank is the other one. That's uh, once again uh, heading back towards the lows of the session. Uh, so these are some of the names where the pressure is pretty severe. ICICI Bank. So there's no uh, no attempt at a recovery. And if there is one, then it's getting sold into. That seems to be the problem. Those are the big names that are taking the market down. Uh, again, we're looking at a drop of about 208 points. Nifty not quite at the lowest levels of the day, uh, but the pressure is relentless. You can safely say that. By the way, the advanced decline ratio uh, is also pretty severe uh, in favor of the declines. You've got just about 1,000 stocks advancing, over 1,800 stocks on the declining side. So those lines continue to be fairly uh, far apart. Well, let's uh, move on then. Uh, Amnil Pharma, founded by two Indian origin brothers, Chirag and uh, Chintu, in 2002, with over $2 billion in sales, uh, is the third largest affordable medicine player in the U.S. market currently. The company, which gets majority of its business from the U.S., says that the price pressure is in double digits and is not sustainable. The company is looking to make India its second home market. Listen in to Chirag Patel in conversation with Ekta Batra on the medicine box. It is a, a low single, uh, well, low double digit actually, so 10 to 12 percent, and it is not sustainable. Uh, we have to keep investing in manufacturing infrastructure, quality infrastructure. So there is no way this 10 to 12 percent price erosion is sustainable. And the sad part is the savings are not going to the patient. I believe we are the only company that grows even 2 percent in the generics market in the United States. Uh, and we see ourselves growing much faster pace because of the, the specialty products, biosimilars and injectables, and the global entry for Amnil coming uh, as, as we have entered the global market. Okay, so, so I assume that you're looking to diversify out of the US into markets such as India to basically capture that growth and probably mitigate some of the US price pressure that you're facing. When it comes to India, what is your plan in terms of scaling up? Are you probably looking at acquisitions? Uh, definitely, we would be. So let me start with how we have entered it. So India is a big market. We believe India will be growing substantially beyond imaginations in all aspects as India's economy is doing so well uh, and will continue to do so well. And we're very happy about it. Uh, they, uh, the uh, market, the awareness, the insurance coverage for patient, the awareness for patients uh, providers is increasing, and that will drive tremendous growth in India in upcoming years. Rare diseases, which are sure. almost impacting 9% of the population, which would be around 100 million people, it needs affordable innovation. There are treatment options available in the Western world, but they're very expensive. Sure. So to bring those uh, treatment, we would need to partner with the private sector as well as public sector. So India is an exciting opportunity for us. Okay, India is an exciting opportunity. We'll leave it at that. Let's slip into a quick break. On the other side, we'll get you more on the markets and stock-specific action. Keep it with CNBC TV 18.